The absurd, slow self-immolation of Brexit is bad enough. But the nasty party, the Tories, seem to have taken Brexit as some sort of mandate to do some of the worst, most conservative, most horrendous, most regressive, most backward thinking things that they've been wanting to do for years but haven't felt that they've been able to get away with. Only now is it apparent just how wimpy and compassionate conservative David Cameron's government was and how much the conservatives were being held in check beforehand by the coalition government with the Liberal Democrats, which makes the Liberals look a lot better in hindsight. Not only are they seeking to repeal the hunting ban, and hunting here is not the same as hunting in the US, it's a sport for posh people in which 50 plus hounds tear apart a single helpless fox. You know, it's not about controlling their numbers, it's not about food, it's not about anything like that. It's just about cruelty and rich people trampling over farming land. That's really all it's about. But perhaps the most egregious and terrible of the things that they apparently have decided to do is that they have decided to carry on and move ahead with their attempted censorship of the internet. We've had bits of this before, and if you follow Porn Panic on Twitter, uh, Sex and Censorship, uh, if you've read those books, if you've followed these stories at all, you know that there has been protesting for, what, a couple of years now about this? These moves, by the Conservatives, but backed by sex-negative feminists like Gail Dines, um, are supposedly anti-trafficking measures and various other aspects, but yeah, trafficking hysteria is one thing, and what they're trying to do is another. What they appear to be trying to do is to put the pornography genie back in the box. They seem to want to roll back into the pre-internet days when the government had total control over all media and the BBFC was approving everything. They seem to resent the fact that the internet kind of collapsed that. And we did enter a much more relaxed censorship era uh, in the wake of that. But now they seem to be wanting to roll it all back. We've seen a lot of protests. Ironically, given the feminist backing for these measures, a lot of the people harmed have been feminist and ethical porn producers. Not that I particularly think many or indeed any porn producers are unethical, but you, you get the point. A lot of women have been put out of business by this. The fetish market is, <laughs> to pardon the pun, dominated by women in a lot of ways. So a lot of these spanking and other videos are, are banned. And one of the particular things they've singled out as being not okay is female ejaculation. Well, okay, all that has been going on for a while. But what they've now brought in on the back of all this, and this just goes on to justify what we always say, that pornography is the canary in the coal mine of free speech and safety and security. What they want to do now is to monitor everybody's internet activity for a year. Now, this has been pretty much forced through now. There's, there's little left to be done to stop it, so we're going to be stuck with this. Every website you log on to in the UK for a year your ISP must now keep a record of. And this information is available not only to people like counter-terrorism task force and so on, which I would still reject that argument, but you can at least see or understand why they might be asking for that. No, all manner of people will be able to get hold of this. Um, customs and excise, the NHS, yeah, y you name it. And this is some kind of big, horrible revelation to a lot of people. You know, this is finally the point where they notice that censorship and authoritarianism is running rife. But the thing is, this has been going on now for years, and government has not been necessary to do it. You'll happily click and you'll tell websites that they can you know, store cookies, that they can track your information, that they can follow you around on the internet. And, tailor themselves according to your usage. Private companies like Google and so on already have this information. So we have already been living in a privately operated surveillance state for years. And people are quite happy to do it. Why they only get upset when the government gets involved, I don't know, because government is completely unnecessary at this stage and have been able to apply pressure to many of these companies 
any way to get this information. We know that Microsoft collapsed to them. We know that Apple put up a, a vague fight against it. It's unclear exactly how far Google has gone along with security demands and so on from the US government, but I wouldn't put it past them. They seem to have forgotten not to be evil. You know, if we'll give up this kind of information for tailored search results, why are we suddenly making this huge fuss now just because it's government? And even outside corporations, even outside government, you have people monitoring everything you do all, all day, all night, online. And who are they? They're your peers, they're activists, they're social justice people, they're moralists as well and traditionalists as well. I mean, whose business was it if you were on Ashley Madison and cheating on your partner? That was between you, your partner, and the website and the people you were fucking. Not anybody else, surely. And yet you had hackers who supposedly are about free action and all the rest of it getting behind this and people excusing it along the lines of traditional morality and the information people's docs being put out, people's lives being ruined in a way they wouldn't have been otherwise without this social panopticon watching everything that we do. You know, you can't say anything anywhere online without offending someone and some mob of idiots appearing over the horizon to, to give you shit. We live in a shame culture. We live in a shame culture like old Japan or, you know, old British rules. You know, which way do you pass the port and do you have to go and shoot yourself if you get it wrong? You know, this is the world that we live in now. A shame culture. But unlike shame cultures of the past, nobody knows what the code of behavior is, what the code of morality is, what the code of ethics is, because there isn't one. It's everyone. You're not allowed to offend anyone, but someone will always be offended by something. And the moment you offend someone, you're supposed to fall on your sword and apologize. You know, we've lived in this repressive, totalitarian atmosphere for years. Just some of you haven't been paying attention. It's only when the government gets involved, when the government starts being authoritarian, that you finally sit up and pay attention. Well, even if we block this somehow, even if we prevent and roll back this legislation, the social situation, the academic situation, the political situation, that's not going to change. We're still going to be in that authoritarian atmosphere. Years ago, I made a game called The Little Grey Book which posited a dystopia. This is one of my favorite games and my proudest accomplishments as a game designer, even though it's just two pages and it's incredibly simple. But what the idea is, is that you play a character and you guide them through a day and you're given challenges by the other players. Simple challenges like catch the bus or you know, you need to go and get food from the supermarket. But then everyone else around the table is watching you with the eyes of a hawk and looking for anything that can be interpreted in any way as something transgressive and naughty and something that might offend someone in any way. You know, they hold you to a high and impossible standard. At the end of the game, the winner is the person who's caused the least possible offence, despite the rest of the group doing everything they can to interpret everything you do in a bad way. It's meant to be satire and political commentary, but this is in many ways the world that we live in. A dystopia where it's not government informants you need to worry about. It's not necessarily the plod knocking at your door you need to worry about. It's someone seeing a sentence out of context that you posted on Twitter and contacting your employer or contacting the provider to get you banned or the rules changing on social media so that posting a nipple gets you, you know, blocked for 24 hours from using any of the services or you get thrown off and lose access to your audience. You know, these things have real material impact and it has nothing to do with laws. It has nothing to do with the police. It has nothing to do with any secretive agency watching you, you know, peering over your shoulder for illegal activity. The stuff you do that gets you in the biggest trouble doesn't have to be illegal at all. In fact, the cops probably wouldn't bother prosecuting you on anything. You know, you're probably safe watching your interracial cartoon bestiality clown porn, and probably no one will fuck with you unless they're after you for something else. Oh, but you present a political viewpoint or an observation on culture that someone disagrees with, and fuck you, you're in trouble. You might lose your job. You might be harassed into a state of depression. You know, you might lose your 
audiences and your marketing areas and all of it has nothing to do with government nothing to do with law nothing at all we've been living in this dystopian oppressive authoritarian future for a while now and it's had nothing to do with left or right or government i'm glad you're waking up but you're a bit late